All right, guys, back to work. Back to work. FOMC is out. Markets are ripping this afternoon. Here's some good news, though. Anytime we see a big news breakout like this, there are two pretty simple strategies I look for the following day. I call it Reaction Thursday. We'll cover those two specific strategies tonight because I want to make sure you guys are prepared with a roadmap to make some money on Thursday. Before we jump in and talk my favorite trades for Reaction Thursday, make sure you subscribe to our channel. I don't want you to miss tomorrow night's video. So make sure you subscribe. And if you enjoy these videos, if you like these video lessons, hit that like button for me. Give me a shout out down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for tuning in. Support the channel. Enough of the intro, though. Let's make some more money on Reaction Thursday. Now, charts are all set to go here. As you can see, NASDAQ triple Qs are all ready. S&P and the SPY is ready. I have four very important clues right now on these charts that are tipping us off to pretty much where the best winning trade entries and exits are going to be for tomorrow. One of those important clues is right in front of us on this 60-minute time frame. We are bullish overall on the S&P, bullish overall on the NASDAQ. Very important. That becomes our directional bias. That tells us the best odds of success. Now, there are three more, I think, more important clues on our tick charts. We don't trade off time charts in our trade room. We trade tick charts. Three important clues on the tick charts. We'll cover that in a moment, though. Before we dive into the tick charts, though, let's grab a look at the schedule for tomorrow because tomorrow is not your average Thursday. Tomorrow is Reaction Thursday. All the big money players been waiting to hear from Jay Powell this afternoon. Now they get back to work and go put their money back in the markets tomorrow morning. So very excited for the day after the FMC announcement. Most importantly, though, there are two important news events you want to keep on your radar for tomorrow. The Philly Fed Manufacturing Index will kick us off at 8.30 Eastern Time. And I would say the much more important news event tomorrow is that 10 o'clock existing home sales number. Philly Fed will hopefully be nice and volatile tomorrow morning. But you, you do not want to miss any time you have big red star news at 10 o'clock Eastern time. If I had to guess tomorrow morning, I would guess the best trades tomorrow in our trade room between 10 o'clock and 1030. So definitely keep those two on your radar for tomorrow. So reaction Thursday, one of my favorite days of the month, the day after FOMC. And again, Philly Fed at 830, home sales number at 10 o'clock. You best be looking, <laughs> looking at those charts tomorrow around 10 o'clock Eastern time. Now, back to our charts though. It's good to know when the news is, right? But the money is made. We know this, right? The money is made on the charts. Now, let's talk about my favorite trades here for tomorrow. I mentioned earlier, there are four total clues telling us where the best trades are for tomorrow. One of those clues is on the 60-minute time frame. Now, let's drill down now to some tick charts and talk about those three additional clues on the tick charts to help us time the perfect entries. We like to use these tick charts in our trade room because they make everything easier. Easier. Pattern recognition is a lot easier on a tick chart. This, by the way, is a 7,000 tick chart linked up there in the upper left-hand corner. And that yellow line, that is the 21 EMA. It's pretty much the only indicator we need to find lots of winning trades each week in our trade room every morning at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. There are three more important clues on this tick chart. One of them is that news spike. Now, we talk a lot about this in our free video classes. Anytime we see a range breakout or a news breakout like this, we can use that breakout leg as the measuring leg. We then anchor it down on the first pullback after that second leg higher, and that now becomes our measuring leg. So we pretty much know where these buyers are trying to go here, at least in the short term at this point, around that 5308 and a quarter area. But much more important is the second clue we see, and that is the range breakout. You probably remember this, right? The last few days, we've been chopping around in this big, big range down here. We are now breaking out of that trading range. And if you watch these videos a lot, you know how profitable these breakout pullback zones can be. So I really love the idea of that breakout pullback to allow buyers to buy the dip and buy nice and low. And most important thing, most important clue is this big news breakout. We get this breakout going higher. Anytime I see, and I mentioned this earlier, 
Anytime we see a big breakout after a news event, there are two specific strategies I look for. Why don't we cover one of them right now on the S&P, and then we'll go to the NASDAQ in a moment. We'll talk about the second strategy on the NASDAQ to finish up the video tonight. I'll give you guys a reason to watch all the way to the end. Let's talk about that first key strategy. We are way, way, way high up right now, right? Big, big move the last couple days here. We have to think there are going to be a lot of bull traps up here, and I don't want to fall for that. I don't want to chase this thing going higher. So whenever I see one of these big news breakouts, one of my favorite favorite trades is to buy a two-legged pullback and a retest of the high. A two-legged pullback and a retest of that high. Now, let's break that down because there's a lot of different ways in which we can time the entries on this. A two-legged pullback is a very simple way of looking at it, but it can be a bit difficult to pick the bottom on those pullbacks, right? It's easier said than done. Now, first of all, when I say two-legged pullback, you want to think about a measured move underneath the moving average. We talk a lot about measured moves in our free video classes. Measured moves are 100% symmetry pullbacks. I want to see that two-legged pullback go a little bit more than a measured move, possibly all the way down into that breakout pullback zone we talked about a few moments ago. So once I get that two-legged pullback, I have my eyes on buying that two-legged pullback. But you know me, right? I'm not a big fan of picking the bottoms. It could be here. It could be here. I don't know, right? This could easily keep going lower. So I'm not going to try to pick the bottom on this. What I always do is I'm going to wait for the pullback to the moving average. And once I start seeing sellers try a couple times, this would be a two try failure pattern just as we teach in the free video classes. Remember, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know how far that pullback will go. But once I pull back to that 21 EMA, if I see bears come in, try once, try twice. Twice. We know this overall bull market will want to snap back up to retest the high. Now I know where their stops are, and now I can buy right into those stops to fuel this thing, squeeze those stops, and run back up to retest the high. A beautiful opportunity for us to use a bear trap scenario, trap the bears in. Now, speaking of bear traps, on the way back to that high, there's one specific entry pattern to look for on the way back to that high, and it is a technical bear trap. Look for a higher high in price and a move just below that prior low, and that would be a fantastic add-on to the entry. Or for some reason, you don't get in on the two-try failure, that bear trap pattern, higher high in price, and the trap below that low, and looking to take the majority of the profit off back up to retest those highs. Now, one more setup I like to look for once we get back up to retest the high. Now, think about it. If we get long, if we buy nice and low, where do you think my target's going to be? The bulk of that profit will come off where? Back up at the high. Now, I'm not a big fan of picking tops and bottoms, but I like the idea of trapping rookie buyers. Probably not a good idea to buy high up there. What if we start seeing rookies come in and trying to buy right into that high, buy once, buy twice. Now think about what I call a crown reversal pattern. It's basically a bull trap pattern. It's a lower low in price and a trap right above that high. I call these crown reversals. There's a lot of examples of those, right, inside the free trading course. Again, think about this, right? Deep, deep pullback, two-legged pullback. Don't pick the bottom, but once we get into support levels down around this area, we trap the bears in, use that two-try failure pattern we love so much, then grab your technical bear trap on the way up, and right when all the pros are taking their profit back up to retest that high, let's trap those rookies in. And remember, don't force those reversals, that double top reversal. Don't force it. Let the buyers get trapped in. We're going to need their stops right here. We'll need their stops to fuel that move back down to take out that low, right? We see this sequence a lot after a big new event. We get that two-legged pullback. We trap the bears in below that 21 EMA. Trap those rookie bears in. Squeeze those stops. As we make our run back higher, we're adding to our positions. We're jumping back in depending on 
how you get in before. There's your bear trap. Once we retest that high, we don't buy high. Right? We buy nice and low. Let the rookies buy high up here. And once we start seeing those rookie buyers once, twice, and get that beautiful gang. I call these crown reversals. These are pretty easy because once you grab that crown reversal, where's the market want to go? It wants to go right back down and take out that low right there, right? This is a pretty easy spot to take some profit. Once we end up back down around that low, what do you do now? Same thing. Trap those bears in again. Trap those bears in again and keep using that one, two, that sequence running back higher. This is one of my favorite strategies or sequences or dance we look for after a big news breakout. We don't chase it higher. We buy those two-legged pullbacks. We look for lots of bear traps on the deep pullbacks, bull traps or crumb reversals off the high. Man, I'm, I'm getting excited just thinking about the game plan for, for Reaction Thursday tomorrow. Now, let's slow Slow down for a second, because if you're watching for the first time right now, I know most of you guys know this stuff. I know you're making money with failures and traps and crumb reversals, but if you're watching for the first time right now, this might be a brand new language for you. I, I look at charts a bit differently than most YouTube channels do. So if you're watching for the first time right now and you want to learn more, I teach all of these entry patterns. I have hundreds of examples of failures, traps, crown reversals. I teach us in a lot more detail inside our free video classes. I'll put a link up here for you. Don't you worry. Upper right-hand corner, grab that link that popped up there and take that free trading course because the strategy I teach in that short video series will teach you a stupidly simple trick we use in our members trade room to know exactly where the best winning trades are going to be each day. And most importantly, Importantly, I want to help you start making money on your own. I'll teach you four of my favorite entry patterns, learn failures, traps, and everything in between. Guys, the markets are way too good right now not to be making consistent money. If you're missing the best trades each day, if you're struggling to get consistency in your trading, hit the link, take that free class. It's perfect for someone trying to make the jump into full-time trading. And also to keep in mind too, I'm going to put all the important links tonight, the description of the YouTube video, put the free class links down. Down there. We trade together every morning in our trade room at 8 o'clock Eastern time. I'll put trade room information in the description of the YouTube video. And also, too, I post a lot of updates on Twitter throughout the day. If you're on Twitter, give me a follow. All the important stuff is in the description of the YouTube video. And that will give you more details and a lot more examples, real examples of the patterns I'm talking about right now. Now, let's talk about some variations of this one core strategy. Remember, I'm going to teach you guys two specific strategies we look for after a big news breakout like this. This is one of those core strategies. Later on in the lesson, we'll cover the second strategy. we go to the NASDAQ here in a moment. So we're not quite done yet. But first, let's talk about some variations of what is told you. For example, oftentimes what happens is, Oftentimes, we get a two-legged pullback, and that pullback is so strong going lower, we're going to get our failure, right? We'll get our one, two. We'll get a nice, easy winner off that bounce. But sometimes that two-legged pullback is so strong, it'll hold the underbelly of that move and come back and retest that low. Now, pay attention. This is not a reversal. Sometimes we get lucky, and sometimes we get an extra bite, a second bite at the apple. If we go back and retest the low now, think about this. It's a huge move higher the last couple days here. Buyers are going to be drooling over the chance to trap in some more rookies, squeeze their stops, and finish off that retest to that high. So do not confuse a retest of that low with being a reversal. Now remember, I don't know how far this will keep going. What I do know, though, is, is that once this thing pulls back to that moving average, it could be here here, I don't know. But once it pulls back, once it pulls back to that moving average, and I see those rookie bears coming in. Now, how do I know the rookies? Because we know that professionals, experienced traders would never short down here, right? These were rookies sell short, tight stops. They're not going to have enough capital to defend themselves. Once those bears try once, try twice, now we know where their pain is, as my first mentor would always say, and we can squeeze those stops. And again, same thing, two try failure, into that bear trap 
running higher. And then once we get back up to retest the high, once again, profit targets come off of the high and then look for that crown reversal pattern I mentioned to short that sucker back down again. These double bottom reversals are oftentimes the most lucrative trades we get because we get two bites at the apple on the way back up to retest the high. Now, one last variation and then we'll grab the NASDAQ here, I promise. One last variation are shallow pullback traps, right? Now, this will make a lot more sense in a moment once we get to the NASDAQ here chart in a moment. But, but sometimes what happens is sometimes we don't get that two-legged pullback all the way down. Sometimes all that happens is is we get just below a prior swing. We're not quite getting that two-legged pull, but we want, right? But, you know, my job right now is, is to give us strategies to use for tomorrow. I want to give us as many tools in our toolbox so no matter what the market gives, we have a game plan to make some money. If all we do is get below a prior swing without any big two-legged pullback which we want here what we look for is I have to buy as low as I can and to do that I'm going to look to trap in the bears right to short this thing it's a bull market overall I'm not a big fan of pick this top right now so let those bears get short a couple times that higher high in price and you want that trap in our trade room we call these shallow pullback traps. I want the deep pullback. I want the deep pullback, right? But you'll, you'll see in a moment on the NASDAQ, you'll see why I say this in a moment on the NASDAQ, but sometimes we don't get that deep pullback. But if I start seeing the bears come in and whack it once and whack it twice, right? Bears once, bears twice. Now, remember, it's a big move up. We expect to pull back and a retest of the high get in as low as I possibly can. I usually go half size, quarter size on these shallow pullback traps, save the full size positions, those deep two-legged pullbacks. So a couple variations of that I'll be watching tomorrow morning in our trade room. But now you know the first kind of core strategy we look for after a big news breakout that we saw today after FOMC. Now let's talk about the second core strategy over on the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ, of course, is very similar. Everything we talk about, everything we talk on the S&P can be applied to the NASDAQ. We're definitely bullish overall on the 60-minute. That is our directional bias. That is our directional filter that tells us where the best odds of success are. But again, we don't trade off tick. We, we don't we don't trade off, t off, off time charts. We trade tick charts because tick charts make pattern recognition so much easier. On, on the NASDAQ tick chart, you'll notice here, this, of course, is a 4,000 tick chart, same 21 EMA. And for the most part, the exact exact same clues. We see a big FOMC news spike. We know, and we talk about this in our video classes, we know that trending markets love to move in threes. Elliott Wave discovered this himself as well. Aaron Elliott talked about this, right? The first leg, of course, and the third leg are usually quite symmetrical. The middle leg is always the oddball, as we say. There is your first leg right there. Second leg, don't worry about that one. Once it pulls back, though, now we know where the market wants to go right now. We have this big, big range back here. We never a break out, break out pullbacks. If you watch these videos a lot, you know how lucrative and how much we love those breakout pullbacks. And again, anytime we see a big move like this after a news event like this, we know there are two basic strategies. We covered the first one a moment ago on the S&P, that two-legged pullback, trap the bears in, retest, crown reversal, do it again, right? All right, so the same game that we talked about in the S&P, we can apply to the NASDAQ. What's that second strategy? Well, sometimes what happens is after a big move like this, we don't get that pullback and we wind up getting one big trading range. These are very, very common. And really, if you know my style of trading, you know I love range bomb marks because they're so easy to trade once you know how to do this. Now, first things first is once we see a trading range, remember two important things. Ranges act like magnets and ranges love to rotate. So if I start seeing a trading range go sideways here, double tops, double bottoms, flat 21 EMA, the next step is, is find levels of support Port below the trading range, wait for that pullback. Remember, don't make that rookie mistake and try to pick the bottom on this. I don't know how far the pullback will go. What I do know, though, is, is once it runs into support levels down here, this is a horrible place to be a seller. So once we pull back, what I'll do is I'm going to look for those bears to come in, get short off that 21 EMA, and use that failure, either a failure 
into pullback combination on the way back up. This will make a lot more sense once you go through my free video classes, either a failure into pullback combination or a failure into my favorite as always, that failure into that bear trap, right? Into that bear trap combo, right? Now, just be aware of this. Ranges love to rotate. So if we can get that entry long on a failure or a bear trap going higher, where does the market want to go? It wants to go back and take out the other side of that trading range, but more importantly, it wants to complete a pendulum swing. Pendulum swings are our way of using symmetry and rotation in a range market. That will give us now our final target. Remember, if you want to make more money, don't trade more often, be more patient, and let your trades run to bigger targets. Once we see that trading range going sideways, we then go out, we look left, find prior swings, find support below it, right? Wait to get underneath that trading range. Remember, this, I, I don't know how far it will go. What I do know, though, is I do not want to sell right there. That is a very low percentage short. I would gladly take the opposite side of that trade. If it fails, we buy that failure, we run the those stops, we get that bear trap, and then we get that technical bear trap, that technical bear trap pattern on the way higher. We leave that runner other side as we go. Now, here's one variation of this that you need to pay attention to because it's very, very common in these scenarios. We oftentimes see this after a big move higher. You know the basic idea now, but be very, very careful with this scenario right here. It's very common in these scenarios. We oftentimes will go sideways after a big news event because nobody wants to buy way up here and nobody takes profit because it's going higher and nobody dares to sell it, right? So it goes sideways. Then what happens is, is we get this pop up running higher. Okay, remember, we do not want to buy high, right? Buy low. It's easy to say, it's more difficult to do, right? I, I get it. The problem though is, is in a range, ranges love to rotate. So what happens a lot of times is, we'll pop up and then slam right back down again. I don't want to get caught chasing it as it goes higher. In these scenarios, what do we do in these situations? We know that ranges love to rotate, right? So we measure the amount above and bingo, now we know exactly where to take profit on a short trade, take profit on a crown reversal off the high. Remember, go against the trend. It's a half size position. It's a quarter size position. Save your bullets for the bull, save your full size positions for the for buying those nice deep lows. You take profit at the pendulum swing or one of my favorite trades is, is wait for that pendulum swing to get hit. Again, it may, it may keep going a bit further, right? But the bottom line is, right, around this area now, now we wait for that moving average to come in. Now, there's one kind of key difference on this. If we go above the high first and then rotate down, that's going to be a lot of momentum for the sellers. This is where we have to be a little more cautious and use that variation, that two try failure, right? Two try failure. Get the bears trying once, bears try twice, and then whoop, right? Bot into those stops, grab that bear trap that we mentioned before on the S&P game plan and run back up. These can be very lucrative because now all those rookies are thinking this is one big reversal. It'll feel like a reversal, but again, it's a range market and ranges, you know now, they love to rotate. So keep track of that range rotation. Do not fall for that bear trap down there. Trap those inexperienced traders on the wrong side of the 21 EMA. Use their stops to fuel the move going higher. Take that quick one-to-one -one first target and then go looking for the add-on on that bear trap entry. Higher high in price trap right there. Remember, where's the market want to go? It wants to go back up to the high of that trading range. I always go half off at the high of that range, right? And then always right always right the high of day the new pendulum swing back higher that will give us some good targets let that final piece of that position run so remember remember, remember very important here if it goes sideways in a range watch that rotation very very carefully again the easy one is if it goes sideways we move lower we trap the bears in and back up right that's always kind of the easy one right with the pendulum swing going back up the challenging one becomes when it goes sideways 
sideways and then head fakes up, right, and then slams back down. Remember, you can short these tops. The way you want to short the top is, is a half size position, quarter size position. It's a crown reversal pattern, right? It's a one, it's a two, it's that same double top reversal pattern we talked about a moment ago on the S&P. These are rookies buying up here, right? Professionals are not going to buy way up here. Trap the rookies in, buyers once, buyers twice. We need those stops to fuel that run back down. And again, look at that mount above, amount below. That's a good spot for a profit target down there, or in my eyes, a fantastic location now. And again, with all that momentum coming off that high, right? Don't pick that bottom. Let this thing pull back. It'll oftentimes really shoot lower. It'll feel very bearish at that time. The minute you start thinking, oh my goodness, is this a reversal? The minute that voice in your head says, no, it's not. It's, it's probably not. It's a deep pullback in an overall bull market. Watch that rotation. Trap those rookies in. This gets fun once you know how to do this a few times with us. Give me a few weeks in the trade room and you'll be a pro at trading these ranges. So trade that range rotation. Don't let that fake out break out off the high fool you. Buy those dips, trapping those bears, and back and forth we go for tomorrow. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm getting excited it's just, just thinking about this game plan. Now you know the two core strategies after a big range breakout that we saw here this afternoon. That's the plan for tomorrow. Now, don't forget, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, every morning, the best place, the easiest way to start making consistent money in the markets is to learn and trade with us every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, in our trade room. I'll put all the important links tonight, the description of the YouTube video, the free class links, the trade room membership links, my Twitter feed, and don't forget, any questions, call the office, send me an email, jump on live chat. I'm always here to help out every step of the process, so don't be a stranger. If you got questions, hit me up. Don't be a, don't, don't be a stranger. I'm always here to help out if you guys need help along the way. In the meantime, fantastic week so far. Let's keep the good times going tomorrow. Be well. Be nice to each other, and hopefully I'll see you sometime soon trading with us in the morning trade room. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.